So today we're going to see a very important uh, topic uh, uh, because uh, as we see the sign uh, that is uh, around the world, we can clearly see uh, that we are, we are living in the very last days uh, and uh, uh, the days of our Lord's uh, second advent uh, is quite near because we can see a lot of things are happening which are signs of the very last day. So today, uh, we're going to see a very important topic. Uh, you see, we all remember that uh, when our Lord Jesus, uh, uh, at his first advent, uh, when he was on the way to Jerusalem, uh, you see, uh, he felt uh, very hungry. And uh, uh, when he felt angry, he saw a fig tree uh, from far away. And uh, that fig tree had a lot of leaves in it. And uh, Jesus thought uh, that uh, definitely there will be a lot of fruits. Uh, and as he came near, uh, he saw that uh, the fig tree did not have any fruits at all. So, if you see, uh, Jesus uh, immediately cursed the fig tree and the fig tree completely withered away. Uh, that's given to us in Matthew 21st chapter, verse 18 and 19. Uh, Munna sister, can you read? Matthew 21st chapter, verse 18 and 19. Yeah, sister, a little bit louder. I think his voice is too low. Matthew, which verse? 21st chapter, verse uh, 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came uh, to it and found nothing thereon but the leaves only, and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. You see, Jesus uh, said, let no fruit grow on this uh, henceforth. Uh, you see, and uh, immediately the fig tree withered away. See, why did Jesus curse this fig tree? We all know Jesus had so much of power that he should have cursing it. He could have blessed the fig tree and there would have been a lot of figs uh, on the spot and everybody... Could I have a question their hunger? But instead of doing that one, here Jesus cursed the fig tree. Why did he curse the fig tree? That is what uh, we are going to study today. Dear brethren, uh, and uh, Jesus uh, uh, tells uh, in a parable in Matthew 24, chapter verse 32, that the cursed fig tree will blossom again. Read verse 32. Matthew 24, 32. Uh, Romy sister, can you read? Romy sister, our brother? Yeah. Yes, brother. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, he he know that summer is summer is night. Very good. See, now Jesus tells to learn from the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that is uh, summer is night. So, Jesus is telling to learn a lesson from the parable of the fig tree that it will sprout again. You see? And uh, Jesus uh, again, uh, you see, uh, tells it in a uh, look, uh, you see, um, 21st chapter, where it is given more clearly. So let us read that verse also. Sister, read Luke 21. Luke uh, 21, uh, verse 29 and uh, 30 and 31. Luke 21st chapter, verse 29, 30 and 31. Hello, Minister, can you read? Okay, brother. And he spake to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they now suit forth, ye see and know, ye, know of your own self that the summer is now nigh and at hand. 
So likewise, he, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of the God is nigh at hand. You see, Jesus uh, here clearly tells uh, that uh, behold the fig tree, you see, and uh, when it uh, starts to shoot forth, uh, you see, when it starts to swing forth, uh, you yourself know that the summer is uh, very near. So, Jesus uh, is actually telling about the same fig tree which was cursed, uh, which is start to spring it seems. Uh. When we can see the fig tree that is springing up and sprouting up, you see, that is a clear sign. What does Jesus say? That the kingdom of God is very near. So, dear brethren, so what is this fig tree which Jesus cursed and which Jesus told that it will sprout again? Fig tree in the Bible actually represents the nation of Israel. You see, let us read Hosea 9 chapter verse 10. Hosea 9 chapter verse 10. Anil Budar, can you read Hosea 9 10? Hosea 9 10? Yeah. I found Israel like uh, grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first tribe in the fig tree at her first time. But they went to Balpur and separated themselves onto that shame and their abominations were according as they loved. See, it says, oh, I found Israel like the grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first uh, ripe, you see, in the fig tree. That means the first fruits of the fig tree. Those are compared to the fathers of the nation of Israel. Then what does the fig tree represent? You see, the fig tree represents the nation of Israel from which these fruits, these fathers came out. So in the Bible, the Israel is represented by the fig tree. Therefore, you see, Jesus at his first advent cursed the fig tree means he came in search of this fig tree. You see, he came in search of the fruits in the fig tree. But unfortunately, what uh, was not found, the sufficient good quality of fruits was not found. So instead of uh, <clears throat> blessing it, which was already blessed for so many years, Jesus cursed it. Hence, we see, dear brethren, once, uh, you see, Jesus was crucified, you see, Israel was scattered all over the world. So today, Israel is a very important place for three, you see, group of people. The Jewish people, the Arabs and the Christians. Therefore, the whole high, you see, the whole world are looking into Israel and seeing their development. You see, so the whole world is looking at Jesus. So what is going to happen to Israel? So moreover, than the whole world looking at Israel, the God's children, the consecrated people are advised by Jesus to look and learn from the fig tree. Therefore, it is our duty and it is our responsibility to watch what is really happening in Israel. You see, dear brethren, so the world's time clock is actually Israel. You see, the time is clicking when shortly the kingdom of God is going to be established on earth. So identify this one. We need to study Israel. Therefore, Jesus said that this will spring forth. When it, you see, the fig tree springs forth, you clearly identify that the kingdom of God is very near. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, the word Israel was actually given for Jacob. Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel as he fought with the angel the all night until uh, he was blessed. And Jacob uh, on his deathbed, you see, blessed his 12 sons from when the 12 tribes of Israel was formed. Dear brethren, after, uh, you see, Israel as a tribe was formed, you see, Israel uh, people uh, were gathered out of uh, Egypt uh, they were brought uh, to the land of Canaan, where God blessed them abundantly and gave them, a, uh, you see, judges uh, for a period of 40 years. Uh, and after which uh, God gave them, uh, you see, kings uh, for a period of 513 years. Uh, dear brethren, and uh, all this favor uh, of which God had given to them, the people of Israel, ended 
when they actually crucified Jesus on the cross. You see, Pilate questions the whole people of Israel, shall I crucify your king? You see, and uh, the people shouted, we have no king except uh, Caesar. What shall I do with this, this man? I am uh, innocent of his blood. I am not guilty of his blood. The blood washed his hands. Then the people, you see, the entire crowd shouted loudly saying, let his blood be upon us. And we and our children will answer for it. You see, it in Matthew 27, 25. So, the exactly as they requested from the Lord, the same thing happened to them. You see, though they had to answer for the shedding of the innocent blood of Jesus, now Israel was totally destroyed in 70 AD. And the people of Israel, you see, they were scattered all over the world. You see, dear brethren. So, why? Because the Romans knew very well that uh, Israel people, if uh, they are, uh, you see, taken captivity, they will again come back and settle in the same place. But the Romans were so angry on these Jewish people that they never wanted the Jewish people to come and gather in the same place again. Hence, they, they want to destroy the Jewish as a nation. Hence, they were scattered all over the world. You see, all over the world, they were scattered. And this was all actually the biblical prophecy. Let us read Jeremiah 16 chapter, verse 13, 15 and 18. Surita sister. Surita sister, can you read Jeremiah 16 chapter, verse 13, 15 and 18? Okay, brother. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. See? Here it clearly says that I will cast you into the land uh, which you nor your fathers uh, knew. Isn't it? Uh, so did uh, Abraham who came from Babylon, did he know about Europe? Did he know about the other places, uh, Asia? You see, and Africa? No, dear brethren. So, they were scattered all over the world. And they will serve other gods. It was Urdha, these gods, uh, other lords, the landlords, uh, other leaders. Uh, they will be under them. And in that period, God would never show favor to Israel, it seems. You see, but, uh, you see, huh? what will uh, God do? Is this the last? Let us read verse 15, sister. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. You see? So, here God says, God had punished them. But God would never leave them just like that it seems. He would gather all Israel from the north, you see, Russia, Europe, from all these places, the Jewish people will be other again gathered to their own land it seems, which God had given to their father Abraham. Okay? Now read verse 18 also, sister. Huh? And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land, they have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable, abominable things. things. Thank you, sir. So, but before uh, regathering Israel to their own promised land, the Bible clearly says that God will punish Israel the double. You see, because they defiled the land with the shedding of uh, innocent blood of Jesus. Therefore, dear brethren, at God promised, uh, this literally happened, uh, you see, in our century. We can see that the whole nation of Israel was gathered on May 14, 1948. They got their independence. You see, all over the world, the Jewish people came and settled, you see, in their own promised land. And on May 14, 1948, you see, the Israel got their free freedom. 
You see, David and why? Because God had promised uh, this land to Abraham. Therefore, the greatest miracle of the century, you see, than man going to moon is the regathering of Israel with the same faith, with the same trust, you see, with the same belief into the same land. It's really a greatest miracle. Why? Because generally, you see, if the people go to various other continents or various other countries, the people tend to just, you see, adjust to their culture and really start worshipping their gods. Like, for example, if a European or a American, a non-Indian, if he comes to India, you see, he tends to worship, uh, you see, uh, the gods which are here and, and living their gods. And similarly, if an Indian, you see, he goes to US or abroad, they begin to worship, uh, you see, uh, their, uh, you see, American or uh, European gods. Uh, that is the general uh, trend here, but then they tend to change the culture. But Jewish people are not like that. The Jewish people, wherever they be, you see, wherever they are scattered, they never forget their God. They had the same faith and same zeal and same energy, the same trust, you see, the same culture, in the same, you see, faith to regather the entire scattered Jewish people to the same place. It is the greatest miracle, dear brother. And therefore, the favor began to return to Israel, you see, dear brother, since 1878. What happened? In 1878, if you see, there was a Russia-Turkish war in 1877 and 1878. You see, the entire army, you see, the entire land of the Turkey was in the hands of the world war. You see, world powers, sorry. So, the Russia-Turkish war, the world powers actually came forward and fought. And that is the time... Uh, entire land of Turkey. Entire land of Turkey means uh, today what we have Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. You see, all this land, including Israel, uh, came under uh, the, you see, authority of the Berlin Congress of Nations. Uh, you see, and they had this power to distribute this land to entire nation in equal parts. Uh, and you know, by God's grace, uh, you know, who was the president, who was the leader of the Berlin Congress of Nations at that time? It was Benjamin D. Israel. Or else he's also called as Lord Beaconsfield. By God's grace, you see, God had appointed Benjamin D. Israel to be in that position at that time when the world powers were supposed to distribute the land. And Benjamin D. Israel gave, you see, the favor to the Jews and allowed the Jewish people to come back to the promised land and uh, have their settlement. And thus, uh, since 1878, the first Jewish settlement that is called as the Petta Tikva happened in Israel. You can see the photos there. You see, that is the photos uh, in 1878, how Israel was there. You see, it was a barren land. Nobody could live there. Only a few, uh, some 11,000 or 18,000 people purchased their land and developed it there. This is all biblical prophecy, dear brethren. Let us read Osea 2.15. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read Osea 2.15? And I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of anchor for a door of hope and she shall sing there as in, in the days of her youth and as in the day when she come, came up out of the land of Egypt. Okay. She shall sing as uh, she came out of the land of Egypt. Uh, and uh, I will give you the valley of Akkor for a door of hope. You see, that, uh, you see, the valley of Akkor, a door of hope, is Petta Tikva, dear brethren. So, since then, the Jewish people began to purchase their own land. You remember? You see? They did not uh, get the land free of cost. They actually purchased that land from the Arabs. You see, let us read uh, Jeremiah 32.44. Jeremiah 32.44. Uh, Muna, sister, can you read Jeremiah 32.44? Yes, sir. Jeremiah 32.44. Jeremiah 32, 
been sell by field for money and subscribe evidence and seal sell them and take witness in the land of Benjamin and in the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Judah and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valley and in the cities of the south for I will cause their captivity to return saith the Lord. Ah, you see they shall buy land for money dear brethren. They actually brought the land from the Arabs. Actually, that land was of no use. It was a land where nobody could live. It was a barren land. You see, it is given in the Bible itself. You can read Jeremiah 33.10. Munasita, please read Jeremiah 33.10 also. Jeremiah 33.10. Jeremiah 33.10. Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, again there shall be heard in this place, which he say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the street of uh, Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast. You see, the land that is desolate without man, Without beast, nobody has inhabited, nobody used to live there, it seems. Now, the entire land was completely infected with malaria. You know, if somebody comes there, within one week, you, sh you are sure to get malaria. But in spite of all these things, the Jewish people purchased their own land and began to develop their land. So this is how Israel began to regather to the promised land. And uh, later on, you see, the father of the nation of uh, Israel, you see, the Theodore Arzel. Theodore Arzel was a great uh, journalist in Europe. He began to circulate, uh, you see, uh, printouts, uh, pamphlets, uh, notices, and publish in the newspaper, where uh, he encouraged the Jews to come and settle in their own land. And because of this, uh, many Jewish people actually came and settled in Israel. And uh, during uh, 1917, when there was a League of Nations, uh, you see, during the First World War, the Israel people who were settled in Israel gave a petition to the League of Nations uh, to grant uh, that uh, land of Israel legally to them, you see. And that uh, legal permission as a nation for Israel was obtained by Chain Wiseman. You see, the Balfour Declaration was petitioned and it was sanctioned to them after the World War, First World War through Chain Wiseman. Now, who is this Chain Wiseman? If you see, Chain Wiseman was a person, you see, who invented the gunpowder formula. You see, until then, there was no gunpowder formula for the bullets. There was for, uh, you see, big, big firingis and all these things and all. A small bullets and all, but the gunpowder formula to run guns, uh, you see, pistols uh, was invented uh, by Chine Wiseman. And because of which, uh, you see, the British as the world powers won the first world war, dear brethren. You see, and uh, world powers uh, had uh, confiscated the entire, uh, you see, uh, the land of Turkey, it was there in their land, in their power. And that is the time. You see, uh, based on the request of the Jewish people, you see, uh, General Allen B. granted the entire land officially, you see, to uh, people of Israel. First, what happened? The Berlin Congress of Nations, the permission was granted for the Jewish people to go and settle there. But here now, the land itself, uh, the request to, you see, to get that land legally as a nation was petitioned in the League of Nations. And General Allenby was a British leader who was, a do, was supposed to do the settlement. And they were very pleased because of winning this First World War. And uh, they requested uh, Chine Weizmann saying, uh, because of you, we have won the war. Now, you please tell us, what is your request? We will definitely give you. Dear brethren, imagine if we were in the place of Chine Weizmann and imagine that the world war has been won because of us. What would we request? Uh, we would request plenty of wealth, gold, house, all the wealth in this world. But Chain Wiseman did not request uh, 
any of this. He simply told, my people, I given the petition in the Balfour Declaration for the land. Please grant them that land. And as per his request, Israel's land was given to the Jewish people. You see, dear brethren, and that is how more and more people began to gather in Israel. Let us read Jeremiah 16, chapter 14 to 16. Jeremiah 16, chapter 14 to 16. Uh, Gopal, brother, can you read Jeremiah 16, chapter 14 to 16? Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishes, said the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountains and fr from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. You see, here it clearly says that uh, it shall be said that uh, God is a God who has uh, gathered uh, uh, Israel out of the land of Egypt. It shall be no more like this. But it shall be said that God is a God who gathered Israel from the land of the north. That means this deliverance of Israel, you see, the regathering of Israel shall be much greater than the deliverance of Israel, you see, from Egypt, it seems. Now, how shall God gather here, it seems? It tells, I will send fishers who will fish them. I will send hunters who will hunt them in every mountain, hill and walls of the rock, it seems. What is the meaning of fisher? The fishers actually use bait to catch the fish. So similarly, Theodore Herzl was the one who put his journalism, you see, and caught as many fishes. Fishes means what? Men in the Bible. As he could gather as many, you see, wise Israel people to be regathered in his holy nation. But later, did everybody come? No. Hence, God said, hunters. You see, and they would gather, you see, the Jewish people from where? From the mountains, rocks, it seems. You see, mountains in the Bible, we know it represents uh, nations. Hunters, uh, they don't hunt uh, so easily. Hunting is a very difficult process. It's a very painful process. Uh, you see, they hunt by killing them. So Similarly, who is this hunter? If you see, it is Hitler. God used Hitler to undown the Jewish people so they may gather to their promised land. You see, Hitler actually built concentration camps all over, you see, Europe, especially in Poland, you see, and he gathered all the Jewish people and pumped him and pushed them into the gas chambers. You see, these are the gas chambers. This is a real photo. You see, this gas chamber is not uh, more than, uh, you see, nine feet height. And uh, it, it it can accommodate only a few people. But they used to compactly fill up uh, more than 150 people. And uh, it has no outlet at all. Only one door is there. Just uh, see this photo. This is the condition of the same gas chamber uh, once the door is closed. There is a small hole. Only somebody can see. That's all. So there is no outlet for the heat to go. And after locking this door, they used to, you see, pump poisonous gas from the top and the entire people who were jam-packed they used to scream and loudly you see and suffer a lot after a lot of suffocation they used to die within 10 minutes dear brethren and all the Jewish people were thus killed you know they were not left like uh, just like that and buried uh, mass burial their bodies were taken to crematorium you see and, uh, you know, who is supposed to take the bodies to crematorium? Their own brothers, sisters, their own family members has to pick up their bodies and take them to the crematorium. Dear brethren, the Jewish people were very rich in uh, Europe. They were very, you see, wealthy people. So once they knew that the Jewish people <clears throat> are being uh, killed systematically, 
you know what did the jewish rich people do they swallowed all the diamonds <clears throat> you see and hitler <clears throat> came to know that uh, the jewish people had done so so he wanted to take out all the we say wealth from even what is there inside the body and jewish people were so rich that if they had any problem in the teeth they replaced it with the golden teeth and the uh, hitler saw this one so he plucked off everybody's golden teeth also that is how the post mortem of each and every body of a jewish people were done after the death and, and their bodies were burnt continuously dear brethren this is the you see the burning equipment which was actually invented by the german engineers by council of hitler you see these uh, you see uh, crematoriums were continuously running for four years non stop each and every hour you see it has a capacity to burn you see uh, two bodies uh, in one hour so continuously it used to run for four years when the second world war happened and after burning dear brethren you see their uh, ashes also was not uh, scattered it was kept uh, under a which is shelter dear brethren all the jewish people they were put into concentration camps in these beds you see and uh, they were all uh, you see confiscated everything was taken from them and uh, they used to be given only uh, you see half liter of herbal tea you know we had uh, tea when we came to nepal no that tea half glass was given for the day you see but then and just a, a few uh, little bit of uh, soup and uh, one slice of bread per day dear brethren and uh, all the hairs were plucked out they were cleanly shaven and uh, in this uh, uh, hairs uh, they used to do carpet uh, other uh, equipments uh, and items for the german army and uh, the shoes uh, you see the bones the skulls uh, of the jewish people were all completely segregated and separated and kept up and uh, they did uh, medical examination on the you see uh, jewish children you can see here uh, the jewish children were used to experiment purpose we all know that uh, if some uh, new type of uh, uh, medicine is invented uh, they actually uh, put it on trial on a mammal so that is a rat uh, usually but here hitler what he do is that he invented various medicines very very severe uh, what do you say Uh, deadly medicines and uh, he tried it upon human beings uh, you see on the jewish people and uh, so actually what would happen if it, that uh, is injected in human beings uh, and uh, you see the jewish female were used uh, you see to see what would be the relation if a man has with animals uh, and what type of children would be born you see dear brethren so these type of experiments uh, were done on the jewish women you see and uh, the the german were so uh, uh, what do you say very violent that uh, the germans uh, used their paper weight as a unborn jewish child's skull you see a unborn jewish child which was in the mother's womb that was ripped off and that child's skull was used as a paper weight on the table and they used to do prepare carpet by what do you say the jewish people hairs and leather you see items like jackets hat shoes were made by jewish people skin dear brethren so so much of torture was given to the jewish people so hence what happened there was a great exodus all the people who were living in poland and europe they decided that they will leave everything and came home running to their promised land they decided that if you are there in others land only these things will happen but if you are there in our own land if we have our own protection nobody could touch us hence they left everything and came and settled into the promised land this is the hunter which god used to hunt down the jewish people from the mountains from the holes and the rocks to gather into their own land and how did the jewish people come read jeremiah 31st chapter verse 8 and 9 jeremiah 31st chapter verse 8 and 9 um 
Anil mother, can you read Jeremiah 31, 8 and 9? Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that traveled with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications with will I let them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. See, how, do they, how will they come in Simsa? They shall come weeping. Who will come? Woman with child, and them that travel with child together. They shall come with supplications, dear brethren. They came empty-handed to their promised land. Even today, dear brethren, we can see the great gathering of Jewish people to the promised land. Why? This is the fulfillment of the biblical prophecy. As more and more Jewish people began to come, dear brethren, God began to bless Israel. You know, in the world history, for 1,800 years, there was no rain in Israel. Until 1878, the first time the rain began, you see, to pour upon Israel. You see, and today, you see, Israel is a very well-developed nation. You can see the comparison in a just a period of uh, less than 100 years. Israel is a magnificently developed uh, nation. You see, it has a marvelous development in a drip irrigation system, you see, and a sprinkler system. You see, dear brethren, just on 20, 30 years before, we had no such uh, equipments like drip irrigation, sprinkler system. Man used to manually plow the field without any equipments using the uh, bullock and a cart, isn't it? Uh, the plow system. But today, you see, there's a drip irrigation system. The entire field of uh, acres together, you see, it can be cultivated. It can be watered, it can be taken care, it can be harvested by just one man using the modern equipments which the Jewish people, which the nation of Israel has invented. Dear brethren, there are a lot of things on the YouTube you can search uh, the developments in Israel. There, there are many to tell. And uh, Israel today is a great exporter of fruits and uh, vegetables, dear brethren. You see, fruits, flowers and vegetables, you know, uh, Israel is a desert land, but it is a great exporter of uh, beautiful uh, decorated flowers, dear brethren. So today, why? Because uh, it is of their, <clears throat> you see, agriculture system. And uh, the vegetables which we use in our house, how is it? Uh, it's very, very small, small, small. And if we keep outside, it will get rotten for a few days. But in Israel, it's not like it's all hybrid fruits. You must have observed in a market recently that uh, how the fruits are. They're all of unique, same size. You see, every 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 fruit, if you take orange or apple, everything is of same size. But if you just go back 30 years, it was not so. One will be big, small, there will be variation. But this is the development of Israel, dear brethren. This is the hybrid fruits. We read about the hybrid fruits in the Bible. When the people of Israel went to the promised land to spy it, and when they came back to the you see, uh, report to the uh, Israel people. How did the people carry the grapes and the pomegranates? They carried upon two people upon their shoulders. This is given to us in the numbers. So this is how Israel, you see, are developed uh, even in the cattle, milk production. Israel has excellency in it. Dear brethren, all this uh, began to be developed by the first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion. David Ben-Gurion <coughs> was a very orthodox and a religious uh, person. He was the first uh, Prime Minister of uh, Israel. So once he became the Prime Minister, the first thing he did was that he took the Bible. Based upon the Bible, uh, you see things, he began to develop Israel. How? Bible gives us information what all things are there in Israel and where it is there. Based on this one only, they developed Israel. Let us read Deuteronomy 8 chapter 7 to 8. Deuteronomy 8, chapter 7 to 8. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read? 
Deuteronomy 8, chapter 7, 8 and 9, brother. 7 and 8. Hmm. And 9 also. For the Lord, thy God, bringeth thee into a good land, a, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depth that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and, and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, oil, olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without, uh, without scarness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stone are iron, and out of whose hills, hills thou mayst dig brass. Mm. How is the land of Israel? It is filled with uh, brooks of waters. Fountains of waters, depths there is water which seems. Uh, it is a land of wheat, barley, wine, figs, pomegranates, olive, honey. You see, whose stones as brass and iron is what? Iron or uh, Dear brethren, based on this information that they began to develop Israel. You see, the only source of water for Israel is what? Uh, river Jordan. The Bible says the river Jordan was so, you see, rich in water. That the surrounding places near to Jordan was like, how? It was like a garden of Eden. Let us read Genesis 13.10. Amar brother, can you read Genesis 13.10? Amar brother, Genesis 13.10. Okay, and Genesis mm. thirteen ten. Mm. And Lord did of his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that is was well water uh what water everywhere before the Lord destroys Sodom Sodom and Gomorrah even as the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt as thou com comest up to Jor. Mm, you see, uh, how was it it, seems, sir? it was well watered even like the garden of the Lord like uh, Egypt. It, seems, it was the garden of Eden. This is where they began to draw water and supply to all the cultivation, you see, in Israel. And Bible gives us the information which place, which tree or plant began to grow. Like for Lebanon, is famous for cedar, cedar of Lebanon. You see, Mount Olive, that means it is famous for olive trees, you see. And Sharon, it is famous for roses. And so many wells that is mentioned in the Bible, given in the Bible, they began to dig bore wells uh, in those places uh, and this is how they began to plant the same plants in that place and Israel developed uh, slowly the brethren. You know, today the technology is what we use, the USB, the pen drives. Uh, this is invented by whom? Uh, this is invented by the Jewish people. Uh, just uh, 20 years before, did we have this technology of USB? No. We have to buy each and every uh, equipment, separate cable, run a disk on it, uh, run the drives. Uh, Today, nothing is required. Just plug the USB cable, automatically drive will get installed, it will work automatically. No worry at all. And the lithium batteries, who invented? This was invented by the Jewish people. Earlier, imagine, huh? whatever battery we are using, a lead acid battery, you see, that could last only for 8 hours, not more than that one. Maximum Duracell, only for 16 hours. But today, how is this cell brethren? Lithium battery. If we can charge it, we can use it for days together. This technology is used in buses, in vehicles today, electronic vehicles. And the solar panel, you see, the solar energy, you see, that is converted to electricity. Who has invented this technology? That is again by the Jewish people, dear brethren. And the world's top companies, 
you see who are doing financial transactions in the whole world especially in the american stock market is of the jewish people levi jeans uh, you see microsoft uh, you see and oracle bloomberg dell nike intel facebook all these people are the jewish people there are more number of scientists in the whole world you see yeah, compared to jewish people you see the entire world world if you put the scientist you see the jewish people have more scientists than the entire world here brethren and the drones you see unmanned aircraft who invented this one it was again by a jewish people you see the jews are so developed and so you see uh, what do you say uh, zela zeal for their country that uh, as soon as they finish the 10th standard the 11th and 12th standard they are made compulsory to serve the military and study there thus uh, they learn to save their families uh, you see and protect their uh, nation dear brethren see that is the uh, nation of israel dear brethren so slowly the you see nation of israel began to develop uh, and the unemployment rate compared to the surrounding arab nations was less than single digit number and this began to poke the eyes of the arabs who were living in neighboring countries and that is the time that yasa arafat you see he began to rise and he began to claim that uh, you see this land belongs to the palestine and he formed organization called as plo and he put the pressure on the world powers to, to take this land back from israel uh, to the palestinians uh, Dear brethren, this all uh, debate began uh, just before Second World War in 1922 when the British mandate uh, Israel was supposed to get so much of land, but uh, unfortunately they got only two percent of the land which they actually requested. You should just imagine one or two percent of the land compared to the Arabs, what they demanded. Why? Because there was uh, oil wells discovered during that time. There was no demand for oil till then, because only after the World War. you see the demand for uh, engines uh, you see the diesel engines uh, you see until then there was only steam engines so the petrol and the oil demand began to come and this was found in the middle east and the middle east began to put pressure on the world powers to stop uh, you see sanctioning the land completely to israel but ultimately on uh, may 14 uh, 1948 uh, israel uh, as a nation was gathered and uh, one more thing is that uh, as soon as israel you see got the independence the very next day evening at 8:00 uh, o'clock they got the independence morning early morning 6:00 o'clock the six nations uh, surrounding israel they came and attacked uh, you see israel uh, uh, the six arab nations uh, they decided to push the jewish people inside the sea but unfortunately none of these things worked out uh, even in the six day war 1967 six day war they began to attack israel as they doing today we are seeing you no know, in the news you see live coverage this has happened several times in israel history but in all this uh, wars it is israel who have won the war so israel is fireproof israel is waterproof so israel is bulletproof because they are the god's true witnesses okay now this is the past and this is the present so what about the future what is going to happen to israel in the future dear brethren in the future the whole world underline it not just one nation few nations the entire world will attack israel let us read zechariah 14 chapter verse 1 and 2 zechariah 14 chapter verse 1 and 2 uh muna sister can you read zechariah 14 chapter 1 and 2 Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy Israel shall be divided in in the midst of the of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses refiled, and the women ra- ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city you see the day of the lord cometh uh, you see <clears throat> for i will gather all nations against jerusalem not just one nation dear brethren the entire nations of this world they shall be against uh, 
Jerusalem for battle. And what will happen is him, sir? The city shall be taken. Dear brethren, you know, October 7th, when the Hamas people they attacked Israel, how much part of the city was taken? Just 250 people were taken captivity. Even those 250 are completely not restored now. Just to imagine 250 people, such a big problem. Imagine if the entire city is taken, what will be is the magnitude of that war? What will be the impact of that war? This is the third world war. We are seeing in the world that everything is being fulfilled in before our eyes. So shortly, these things will happen. The forces are gathering for all these things. What will happen? The houses referred, the women ravished. Half of the city shall be taken captivity. This we can see literally in front of our eyes. This happened on October 7th. That was just a sample, dear brethren. And uh, half of the people, few of the people will left in the city, it seems. Uh, that is the time they will cry. None of their uh, equipments, none of their, uh, you see, technology, none of the scientists can save them. Not even American president, dear brethren. Then what will happen? They would have no other chance than to cry to God. That is the time they will cry to God. See, Ezekiel 38.16. Anil Buddha, read Ezekiel 38.16 and uh, Zechariah 12.10. Ezekiel 38.16 and Zechariah 12.10. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land it shall be in the later days, and I, I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sacrificed in thee, O God, before their eyes. Ah, they shall cover the nation of Israel like a cloud, it seems, dear brethren. God shall bring, you see, God shall bring the enemies against the land of Israel. You see, who is going to fight the Third World War? It is nobody. God is going to do the third world war. Hence, God only will save them. Read Zechariah 12, 10, brother. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they shall Mourn, mourn for me as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is it bitterness for his firstborn. Mm. See, God shall pour out the spirit of supplication. When God pours out the spirit, then the eyes of Israel shall be opened. Is uh, today's Israel's eyes open? No. They are blinded. They are not able to see Jesus. They even don't recognize Messiah as Jesus. <laughs> they can't see that Jesus is the Messiah. Even today, their eyes are blinded, dear brethren. But what will happen? Once uh, their eyes are opened, they will cry for uh, Messiah, for Jesus, as if they cry for their only son, dear brethren. You see, that is the time when they cry to God. God will fight for Israel. You see, how? How will God fight for Israel? Read Zechariah 14.3. Zechariah 14.3. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Zechariah 14.3? Romy sister, you there? Yes, brother. Uh, Zechariah 14.3, sister. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Mm, see, what will happen? One and two, it said, everybody shall be taken captivity. Half of the city shall be taken captivity. In verse three, the Lord shall go forth to battle against those nations as, how? As he fought in a day of battle. There are a lot of examples of God battling for Israel. How did God fight uh, during the days of Gideon? Just 300 people defeated 120,000 Midianites. Uh, no war actually happened. Even before the people of Israel came down. You see, what happened? Uh? Now, what happened? Uh? 
Midianites ran away, leaving everything. That is what is going to happen. This is the way God is going to fight for Israel. Miraculous way. No modern technology equipments, nothing. This is the time that the ancient worthies will be resurrected on this earth. Through the ancient worthies, God shall lead Israel to victory. Now, how did God, uh, you see, uh, fight for Israel during the days of uh, Sennacherib? Sennacherib, the Syrian king, attacked uh, Israel. You see, he laid the city under siege. Ezekiel prayed to the Lord with tears uh, by morning. Entire army was dead. Uh, angel, single angel came and destroyed 185,000 people. Uh, in one night, uh, imagine if God sends his ancient voice, an entire host of angels, dear brethren, how the enemies of Israel will be defeated as it was defeated in the days of old. Dear brethren. This is what is going to happen. And the people of Israel will recognize, oh, oh, this is not our end. This is God's end. And they will recognize Messiah who will be already ruling in the spiritual heaven. Will already be ruling in the earth's atmosphere, you see, invisibly. And they will realize that this is the work of the returned Lord Jesus, uh, dear brethren, and accept him as a savior. And thus, uh, kingdom shall be established in Israel. Jeremiah 31st chapter, 31 to 34. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Jeremiah 31st chapter, 31 to 34? Behold, the days come, so the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day of that, I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Mm. Although mm. I was an husband unto them, said the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they, they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me for, for the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember I will remember their sin no more. See, they broke the covenant which God gave through Moses. You see, they broke that covenant. But here God tells, I will establish a new covenant which will not be written upon the stones. It will be written upon their heart. By heart. We tell now for children in the school, by heart it, by heart the tables. You see, by the formula. By heart it will be implemented. You see, printed on each and everybody's heart. Dear brain. You see, so that is the time it is not required for one person to go and teach other person to know the Lord. Everybody shall know the Lord from the least even to the greatest. Everybody shall know the Lord because Israel's sin shall be forgiven. This is how kingdom shall be established first in Israel. Seeing kingdom being established, the peaceable kingdom being established in Israel, what will the other nations do? They will all come running to Israel and seek for counsel. Read Zechariah 8 chapter 21 to 23. Joel brother, can you read Zechariah 8 chapter 21 to 23? And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people and, and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hearts in Jerusalem mm. and to pray before the Lord. Mm. Thus said the Lord mm. of hearts, mm. in those days it shall come to pass that, that ten men shall take hold out of all language of, of the nation, even shall take hold of the scripture script of him that is a Jew saying, we, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. See? What, it, uh, huh? what will happen in Simsa? Once when uh, 
peaceable kingdom is established in Israel. Seeing uh, these other nations, they'll come running to the Jewish people. They say, we are heard that God is with you. We will also come and worship that God. This is how God's kingdom is going to be established. Dear brethren, you see, no, still now, this peaceable kingdom is not been established in Israel. Why, you know? Because God is waiting for the faithful church to get completer. He is seeking his faithful ones all over the world, dear brethren. Once the church is complete, once the lack and 44,000 is complete, kingdom shall be established in Israel. God is seeing such people. He is seeking from the whole world. Who are the people who want to remain faithful to God until their death? Read Romans 11 chapter 25, 26, 27. Romans 11 chapter Anil Badar, can you read Romans 11 chapter? Romans 11 chapter, verse 25, 26, 27. Romans 25. Romans 11 chapter, 25, 11. 26, 27. Brother. 25, 26. For I would not, uh, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, hmm. lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fulfillment of Gentiles become in. See? And so what does he say? It... One minute, brother. What does he say? Blindness in part is happened to Israel, until when? Until the Gentiles come in. The lack and 44,000 number which has been selected from the Gentiles, you see, that is happening. Until this number is being gathered from the Gentiles, this blindness will remain to Israel. But once the church is complete, once the one lakh 44,000 are complete, what will happen? Continue with that. Huh? And so all Israel shall be saved ah, as it is written. All Israel shall be saved. God is waiting for you and for me, dear brethren, to make your calling election sure. There's so many brethren in the world who are willing to dedicate their life, offer their bodies as a living sacrifice and consecrate their life, dear brethren. So God today is doing the harvest, dear brethren. So you all have that opportunity. God has given this truth to you. You're all having that opportunity, you see, to be of that uh, little flock, dear brethren. So once uh, this count is finished, uh, immediately Israel shall be saved. Today we can see the world war now. You see, uh, preparations for the world war. You know, that means uh, the door is closing, closing, closing. It's very near the Abudran. So God is giving us the truth. So let us remain faithful to God and offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. So may the Lord bless these words. Anybody has got any questions, any doubts? You can please let me know. Anybody has got any questions? Any doubts? Anil Budar, Sunita Star? 